Good afternoon, we're the Junior Town Council and myself, I'm the Mayor of the Junior Town Council. And basically we're a non-profit organization made up of young leaders who inspire to make a difference in our community. And we're all from different schools and we're here together. We've got events such as a debate later this year, a soccer tournament, and we get all the youth together from different levels in society as well to come together and just spend time with each other. And we do projects as well to improve the community. So as I said earlier, I'm Nikita Mon, the Junior Town Council Mayor. And next to me, I've got Ashton. And my name is Ashton Harding, and I'm a member of the private school Swakop Mons and the Junior Town Council. My name is Jesse Abram, and I'm a learner at Nama High School and a member of the Junior Town Council. My name is Aiden Ibrahim, and I also attended private school Swakop Mons, and I'm also in Junior Town Council. My name is Wendy Kangwehi and I attend um, Proet Academy and I'm also a member of the Junior Town Council. My name is Ernesto De Jesus, I attend Namap High School and I'm a Junior Town Councillor. Good afternoon, my name is Sinorita Geises, I'm the Deputy Junior Mayor and I attended the school Namap High. And so together we're just going to have a general discussion about the new school curriculum in Namibia <coughs> and how we feel about this big change happening in our country. So what are your thoughts? Now this new curriculum is basically a version of Cambridge that has been adapted for Namibia, its government schools and its students. Yeah, so basically, because it's adapted from the international Cambridge system, it allows the students of Namibia to travel abroad and go study in other countries, even perhaps Europe, which before they couldn't do. And even to go study in South Africa, they'd have to do a bridging year, which now they don't. They can just, after graduating grade 12, they can go study at any university. Well, if their marks are good enough, that is. Well, from my understanding, you have to have 60% or above to go to grade 12. All the other learners Part will graduate in grade 11. So how do you think that's going to affect these young people leaving school in grade 11? I think it's going to affect some of them positively because if it was a young person, say if I wanted to do music or drama or a more social career, I would want to finish in grade 11 so I can get more a uh, head start on my career if, since it's more social and I don't really need AS results for that. And that's also true. for the people that will be going to grade 12, I mean, since they are going to be doing the uh, curriculum of Cam the, the, curri the new curriculum of Cambridge, it actually gives them an opportunity to be internationally, internationally recognized, which means that they can actually go and study abroad, and that gives them a better opportunity to become somebody in life um, compared to the old curriculum. So, yeah. This new curriculum also um, motivates you to work harder so that you can finish, so that you can go to grade 12 as well. So you will work much harder than you did because there's a lot of competition going around. But currently there are only two schools, if I have to speak about our region, um, specifically in Swakopmund that offer grade 12. And which means that these learners in Swakopmund have to basically write beyond that point of 60% because the competition is high and every learner wants to continue to grade 12 which means that they have to write above 60 or even more to be considered by the school and to have a place in grade 12. Then again, once they're done in grade 11, for those who don't qualify for grade 12, they have to think about their tertiary education, which means that now they have to consider universities. Now coming to that, the universities in Namibia currently have to adapt their system towards this new curriculum that is being implemented, which means that it's going to take a few years or so, but it, in that time it creates competition between the grade 11s and the grade 12s. Um, this year there's only one group of grade 12s who will finish the previous curriculum, which means that the intake at universities will be higher because they will have to accept more, more children into their institutions, which means that the grade 11s have a higher competition and more people to compete against to get a place at university. So the question is, if they don't get into university, that means that at this point, the only option that they have left is to sit with their certificate and then look for vocational training, which is at this point the only institution that they can go in. That is, unless the tertiary education system also adapts to it as quick as this um, new curriculum is working. Yeah, so we also have to concede to the fact that 
not everybody does automatically go to a university. I mean, even before this new curriculum was actually implemented, I am of the opinion that everybody did from the beginning have to work hard because they didn't just only have to compete against the grade 11s, they also had to to compete against the grade 12s of their year so that means that from the beginning they had to work hard so i feel like this point um at this point where the grade 11s and grade 12s have to compete against each other it doesn't change the fact that people have to work hard from the beginning because you are fighting for your spot and why would i mean why would you consider grade 11s as actually more competition because I mean, not even everybody does go to university because of fees and all of that. So that means that the studying that they're talking about is to get a bursary. And at the end of the day, the people that do get the bursaries are the people that have worked for it from the beginning. So it does increase, it does increase the pass rates because everybody does want to become somebody in life. And it doesn't necessarily mean that if you don't go to university that your life ends there. Because we do need the tour, um, the tour guides, we do need the builders, we do need the architects, we do need all those people as well. And to stop at grade 11 shouldn't be like a, a setback to what you can become in life. Because at the end of the day we are developing Namibia and we are striving towards excellence to make our country great. Now, what's also important to remember is that, yes, this new syllabus is more difficult, but it is putting Namibian students on a more international level. By increasing the standard of our education, we're bettering our future workforce. We're making it easier for Namibia to proceed in a, in a better positive direction. Yeah, I agree with that, since cause a, lot of you, a lot of the youth are mentioning now the work is harder than the work was previously. But Namibia is stepping up their game in development and they want to step up their level. They want to push the kids to or us to our best of our ability in education. But I know it's, it's difficult, most probably at the moment, but I think in the future, well, schools, school prepares us for university. So if the work is harder, we'll be more adapted to that university lifestyle and that work from my side, from my opinion, I think. Yes, but also because the new curriculum is harder than the old one, it means that the children who really do want to excel in particular fields, which is mostly medicine, they will be far better, like you said, at university, but also it will be those children that get university. Because before, not I don't want to say that the children who were not as academically inclined still went into university occasionally, but they would often drop out, which left an empty space, or they would they would take up the space of someone else who wanted to work, but perhaps just didn't work as hard as they should have, but could have. This will force those that can to do and to get to where they want to be in life. Yes, yeah, that's very true. Yeah. I also agree with Ashton because I feel like adding a year like grade 12, I feel like as we were informed, it would be like university. So I think that extra year of grade, grade 12, even though it is an option, does mentally prepare the learners who are going to university as it is going to be like university. Yeah. And there's also the point where it's only some learners that can make it through that get above 60%. Mm -hmm. So classrooms will be smaller. I think that's also quite a big issue at the moment yeah. is many students and only one teacher trying to teach a class. Mm -hmm. So it'll be less students who actually want to do that kind of thing in life and say law, or doctor, veterinarian that kind of thing, they're in that class now with less students who don't really care about passing or care about doing something like that in the future. So there's less students in the classroom and one teacher to focus more on those students who want to excel in more of a field other than maybe arts and culture, rather like law and doc becoming a doctor. Now it's also important to bring up, of course it's I, th I think none of us can deny that this new syllabus is more difficult, but you should also consider the reasons why the students are failing. Of course, a lot of students work their hardest and maybe they don't make it, but there are plenty of students who put in no effort. Now, I just ask that you all look at the reason someone failed and take more of the facts and statistics into account. So at the end of the day, the new curriculum is not the reason why people would be failing because the pass rates are not going to be affected by the new curriculum, they're actually going to be affected by the, uh, the learner's um, determination and strivation from the beginning because it is the learner that is doing the new curriculum. So if you come with a mindset that says that I can't do it, at the end of the day you won't strive to such 
um, an extent that you know you can, but then if you come with that attitude that says, I can do it, and I will make it to grade 12, I will make it to university, and I can push through this new curriculum because it's just another obstacle, basically another hurdle that I have to jump to get to the finish line, then obviously you can do it because there is nothing stopping you. I mean, if you're not willing to learn, then no one can help you. But if you are determined to learn, then I assure you that there is nothing in this world that can stop you because at the end of the day, you cannot just receive education. You have to achieve it. And the only way you can do that is actually pushing yourself to such an extent that you do do it. And basically, the new curriculum is only helping us do that. So it's time that we actually do realize it and then work with it instead of working against it. Yeah. Yeah. Considering what Nikita just said about um, there being less kids in a class, you actually get more attention, which actually uh, um, increases your pass rates as well, and actually affects your studies and how you do in school in a better way. Yeah, because many children have the mindset that no one cares about them. So if there are less students in the class, the teacher will give them more attention, giving them the feeling that they're important. And just having that mindset that someone cares, someone thinks you're important, can go a long way to improving your future. Yeah, that's very true. Also, um, on the topic of pass rate as well, the people who don't want to get, go to grade 12, they can end in grade 11. And they also, the pass rate in grade 12 would also be higher because those are the people who want to pass grade 12, who want to do matric. But those in grade 11 who don't want to maybe go in the field of, as I was mentioning er, the, earlier, going to university, those people can still pass on a lower level and it's easier for them to still get a certificate and also have something uh, to show if they want to go to maybe a college or something. Yeah, and I also feel like the people that will be sitting in a grade 12 classroom, I mean, not, especially if you feel like you can't do it, I think that the people that will be sitting in that, in that classroom, you're going to be associated with people that do want to do it and that in turn actually changes the habit and the ways you think so that means that everybody will be striving towards excellence and i think that's what namibia needs at this stage in time we need to strive towards development and we need to strive towards excellence because it's time to make our country great so this new curriculum is actually a very good implementation and i feel like it's not an issue that people would be i mean that the children the school going youth should be facing um. The school going youth, we're starting with this in grade one, grade two, so in 10 years from now, 20 years, they'll be completely adjusted to the system. It'll be much easier for them now. Uh, yes, it is difficult for the current youth, but hopefully they can pass. Hopefully they can do well and excel in life even. Adding on to what Ernesto said, I feel like the new curriculum is something that is aiming for self-motivation among the learners because this does push you to be mentally ready and mentally like focused and also I think self-motivation is something that can go a long way beyond your studies. Yeah. Now, some of the other concerns were, what if a student does graduate from grade 11 and manages to make it to university? Do we think that they are ready? Do we think that each person at grade 17 is Good. capable of living on their own or away from family? So, in my own opinion, I feel like they are ready because if they did qualify to get into university at the age of 17, I mean in grade 11, that means that they're academically capable of keeping up with the people that are in the universities. Because if we were to look at other countries, there are people under the age of 15 that also do do college and those type of things. I mean, if you look at child genius, for example. So I think mm -hmm. that if you, yeah. So I think that if you are the age of at the age of 17 and you can compete with the new curriculum and you did qualify for university. I think that you are ready and I think that if you did qualify, you are also mature enough to take care of yourself um, when you live alone. So I feel like that wouldn't be a very big issue. Yeah. Well, all those children that finish in grade 11, by the time that, let, let me rather focus on this first group because Immediately after the grade 12s are the grade 11s that come along. So basically, the grade 12s will then um, merge into the mainstream of university, which is an obvious direction that majority of them will go into. Now then we come back to the grade 11s, which is basically a main concern, because the government has two groups now that they have to focus on, especially the, the higher education system. 
the ministry has to basically focus on two groups and implementing the second group into this university mainstream as well at the same time. For the grade 12s, there's no concern as they are as seen, they are capable of doing it. They're capable of going on into university. But about the grade 11s, the majority of them will finish at the age of 17, some even at 16, as we already know, because of their young age intake into a, um, high school. So, which means that are these kids ready for university? Are they mentally strong enough to take on whatever challenges are thrown their way um, in the lifestyle of a university student? Mm -hmm. And in the case that at that time when they finish grade 11, will the, the institutions be ready to take them in? That is my main concern because where are these kids going to go to once they're done with, uni once they're done with high school? Because we know if you pass grade 11 with more than 60% and the schools accept you, your future for that time is already determined for grade 12. But what about the rest? What about the, the children that don't have a direction at that time? In grade 11, I was thinking, let me go to grade 12. But for these kids, they have to think about their future in the next 10 years. They have to think about what are they going to study? Who are they going to become? And that, I feel, is a lot on a child's um, brain because what you need to be focusing on is passing, but you already passed. You're at that stage where you have to decide, what do I do next? And if our system does not, is not ready to take them in, where do they go? Vocational training, yes, it will get them to an entry level at university in, um, at the time that they go to. But that means that the NQF has also has to, NQA, I believe, also has to change the, the, the levels that they accept children at. So a lot of these institutions that will take in these grade 11s basically have to adapt, and they have to adapt as quick as possible because the influx of learners will become more and more, and it will become a national crisis at the end of the day, rather than something that will benefit us. Mm -hmm. So I believe the main concern is, where do these kids go? Because the benefits are evident. We can see them. They're happening, and they're fruitful. But where are they going to? Where is this education system leading them to? specifically the grade 11s. Can I say something about that? Mm -hmm. So these children that are doing the new curriculum and that are currently in grade 11 now have already specifically chosen their subjects in grade 9. Why have they done that? They have chosen those subjects to pave their way into what they want to become. So for example, me, maybe I chose languages. So that means I want to be somebody linguistic, maybe a lawyer or a tour guide or a motivational speaker. So these people aren't, uh, the, the, the grade 11s of this year aren't basically just left in the dark like people that don't know what they want to do because they've already chosen their subjects in grade 9 to, um, they chose them according to what they want to become in the future. So. If they have chosen those, I think that they have chosen things that would be fit for them, not something that, have, that has been enforced on them, because they chose it by themselves. And so that means that if they want to become something in life, they will choose this, I mean, um, they will choose something that actually helps them to become what they want to become. So the, the subjects that they chose is actually going to be benefit them on what they wanted to become. So that means that the people actually do know what they want to become after grade 11. So if they go to grade 12, it's because what they want to become in needs them to go to grade 12. But if they stop at grade 11, that means that they know why they're stopping. They know what they chose. They know what they're going to be doing after grade 11. Because we weren't just introduced about this problem in grade 11. We already knew about this problem in grade 9 because we were already introduced to it. We've already been informed about it. So when we came to grade 11, I mean, when we were in grade 9, we chose subjects and then started with it in grade 10 and 11. And those subjects are going to alter what we're going to become in the future. So that means what we have chosen is what we want to become. And I mean, some people would say that, no, um, I'm in grade 12 and I still don't know what to become. We didn't have that privilege to actually sit and uh, ponder on what we want to become for the rest of our high school years. We were supposed to be independent and determined to what we wanted to become. So we chose our subjects in grade 9 so that in grade 11 when we come there, we actually know what we want to become in the future. And if... I don't need to go to grade 12 to become a tour guide or if I don't need to go to grade 12 to be a builder or an architect, why do I have to? So it's not that they're dropping out, they're actually legally 
out of school they finish school and when they do what they need to do they actually successful at the end of the day and also we are building our um, we are developing Namibia and also we are combating finance financial constraints and we are also uh, creating a better workload so uh, the the population that will be working is actually going to be higher and it's not going to be people that are forced to do um, to become doctors or forced to become lawyers because that's what, um, because that's what society has told them to become it's going to be ind independent individuals that know what they want to become and when they become that Namibia is growing at the end of the day and I feel that's what other countries are doing so if we start doing it as well and it is beneficial to us I don't feel like we have to go back with development to go back to the old curriculum where everybody has to go to grade 12 in my own opinion because everybody um, the, the, the new curriculum is difficult but we are managing. I mean, there aren't textbooks, but that doesn't mean the teacher doesn't have a textbook. The teacher does have a textbook. The textbook complaint is actually that the children in the classrooms don't have textbooks, but the teachers do have them. And that means that what they're teaching us is actually valid to what we have to know at the time. So when we do go out at grade 11 or even grade 12 for that matter, we know where we're going to. It's either we go to VTC, or it's either we go to a university. and those choices that we make are choices that we want for our own, own lives because we were, we chose ourselves we weren't nobody chose for us no teacher put us in a specific group like saying you are going to be doing um you're going to be doing languages because you're good in languages no it was your own choice just to comment on what Ernesto just said um sometimes it's actually not only just you don't you get people that choose their subjects in grade nine yes but then later on in the years they realize that this is not actually what I want to do, or they realize yeah, exactly. I'm not very good in the subject. So then they tend to, even right now in grade 11, you still get students leaving hospitality and going to business. Two, diff two subjects that are completely different. Yeah, because I can tell you that many of my friends who graduated grade 12 last year have told me they have absolutely no idea what they want to do with their lives. And now you're telling them to in grade 9 to choose what they have to do for the rest of their lives. That is f way too young to be making the decision that will last you the next 60 to 70 years of your life. Mm -hmm. And many children will just pick, okay, my parents always told me I have to be a doctor. Okay, so this is doctor, why not? So that's biology, math, physics, chemistry, or whatever else you need. And then after they get to grade 11, they say, okay, sure, why not, let's just continue. Then they get to grade 12, they go to university, and afterwards they become depressed because they don't like doc being a doctor at all. Mm -hmm. So I just think, personally, I prefer if just the world worked differently, which sadly we can't change. If yeah. children were given the time to be children and then later to decide what to do with your life and not to have your life be binding to what you choose. Mm. Yeah, of course, of course, I think that's a terrible, terrible thing. But to be fair, that is not a problem with the current curriculum or syllabus. That's just the way things are. Yeah, yeah. but on, back to what you were saying, Ernesto. There is that issue that people leaving grade 11 or graduating in grade 11 or such a young age, they don't know where they're going to go, what is the country going to do with them, where they're going to go, where they're going to work, where they're going to go study. And also the universities, colleges have two flows of graduates going, coming into those universities and colleges that need to adapt to that as well as the workforce has two, like because people in one year, two big groups are graduating as well. Yeah, and that's a lot of students that the universities aren't used to taking. So it's a lot of students that could potentially be told, sorry, we don't have space for you, mm -hmm. and that they don't go to university despite the, every effort they made to do so. Mm -hmm. That does open up um, self-employment after grade 11. Mm -hmm. I think there's a level of maturity that you gain with more knowledge you learn. So I feel like if they were more knowledgeable to the career choices, I think more learners, I wouldn't say they would end in grade 11, but more of them will make more choices on occupations that they know they can easily get so they can immediately start working earning an income and this courses are usually the labor ones the hospitality ones and this will create more um, um, self-employment and the employment rate of the country itself will go up which is something us as a country are striving for mm. yeah I really agree with that because there's also that aspect of how people graduate in grade 11 and they instead of wasting a whole year of grade 12 when they don't want to be in grade 12 they can use that year to start up their own business to work in hospitality for example to work in building where they wanted to work 
they or when they decided they want to do that instead of doing something more high, not higher up but more complex or it's not something they're interested in even some people they save a year because they want to do something cultural or singing or become a musician and actress and by doing another year grade 12 they have less time to they lose time when they could rather be doing that and, and then again the universities will have to they basically let me not say forced but they basically pushed to um, higher their standard because the grade 12s will be at a higher standard than the grade 12s two years ago which means that if they take in the grade 12s their standard and their degree level should be higher to meet the the standard of this curriculum which means that if this curriculum is working as it is it's increasing the standard of our country which means our university level should also increase at the same time to have the the right type of proportion so that the education system in high school is higher, but the university level is low, which means that these people who are studying at university are less skilled and they're less qualified. So I believe that it will force the universities to also increase their standards, and therefore we'll have more qualified people in our um, corporate world. Yeah. Through this, I think we've gotten a lot of points down. And in Namibia at the moment, everyone has a different opinion on this. There's lots of positives and negatives that I guess it balances out well in different people's perspectives but I just want to say thank you for listening to our discussion today and I hope we got our views and opinions across